Gather round adventurers and let me tell you a story of found family and witty dialogue in a world where the sky is falling around you. Hello Cozy Gamers and welcome back to the Cozy Gaming Club, where today of course we're talking about D&D inspired Tavern Talk. But rather than fighting the hordes yourself, in Tavern Talk you take on the role of an innkeeper, with a talent for mixing drinks that can increase the stats of your adventurers. As the partaker of an occasional Dungeons and Dragons campaign or two, and a huge fan of Coffee Talk, I've had my eye on this game for a while. And the devs were kind enough to gift me a key to try it out early, so a big thank you to Gentle Troll Entertainment and future friends. You're welcome in my tavern anytime. After playing several hours of this game over the last couple of days, I wanted to put together a video sharing my thoughts and impressions ahead of its release. I don't know where to start because there is so much to talk about with this game, so let's start with that, the talking. Have and Talk at the end of the day is a visual novel, so if you're not into long conversations with recurring characters then this probably won't be the game for you. But if you do like well written dialogue and character development then keep listening. From the anxious elf fable to the moody rogue who changes their name more times than their party members, these characters have a lot to love about them. Each one seems to represent one of the different classes in Dungeons and Dragons, with the aforementioned ranger and rogue who are soon joined by a bard, cleric and a barbarian. At the start I thought they were maybe sticking too closely to these archetypes, but as the story goes on you'll really see their characters develop as you send them on quests and they begin to open up to you. Each character has their own page in your journal and as you learn more about them from their alignments to their backstories, their page will fill out with more information for you to refer back to. I really love that you don't know everything about the characters at the beginning, and that as you play they'll reveal more information about themselves. It kept the game interesting, as did the wide range of characters you'll have the opportunity to meet, including fun characters who may be familiar to you from other games, or even social media. Following these characters throughout the game as they slowly come out of their shells was so rewarding, especially as you watch them overcome their personal issues, make friends with one another, and fill your tavern with little tokens of appreciation from their various quests. I also wanted to give a big shout out to the character diversity while we're on this topic. Yes, we're in a fantasy world, so there are humanoid cat creatures and humanoid bushes, but we've also got pronouns and characters who are differently abled, which is so refreshing to see. But the characters aren't doing all of the heavy lifting when it comes to the dialogue and plot, there's also an overarching story for you to pay attention to. I will say that it's impossible not to fall in love with this fantasy world. The developers have gone above and beyond adding depth to the setting that we'll never get the opportunity to see. As my regulars discuss the beautiful fairy portals and the sky whales that they encountered on their adventures, I'm filled with a want to go there. I want to see those things which in a way makes me relate even more to my role as a tavern keeper, who hears all about these incredible vistas instead of witnessing them themselves. On a side note though, if the devs ever did write a book in this universe, I would read it. Early on in the game you'll witness what at first seems like a whimsical meteor shower, but quickly turns out to be a devastating calamity that shapes the course of the game from then on. I won't spoil too much as I want you to be able to discover it for yourself as I did. Besides the main storyline there's also a series of quests that your trusty adventurers will set out to complete. This is Dungeons and Dragons inspired after all, and as the owner of the local tavern you're in charge of writing them up and adding them to your quest board. Throughout your conversations with adventurers you'll occasionally be fed a rumour or two that form the bare bones of a quest. Every quest is made up of three rumours and when you've collected them all you can make the quest and pin it to your board. This is one of the first parts of the game that I didn't personally enjoy as much. I love the idea of little rumours from conversations that you can collect over time. This bit is really well done. But when you go to your quest board with all your hints, I was expecting to need to work out what fit together. However, that's not the case. Every rumour that relates to a particular quest is printed on the same piece of paper, making it easy to tell which rumours go together, and removing a bit of the fun of needing to piece it together yourself. This makes it repetitive and a little redundant, as you don't really need to read the rumours themselves, 
you can just drag the ones of the same colour together. The quests are really fun though and range from finding lost objects to slaying mythical creatures and offering relationship counselling. There's so much variety here and one of the best things is that you can have some input on the quest as well through your drinks. Drink mixing is another major part of Tavern Talk where your adventures will ask you for something to not only quench their thirst but also raise their stats. You'll have different tonics which boost different stats and a series of recipes that you need to follow. As you play through the game, you'll also unlock a variety of infusions which can be used to make more difficult recipes and also gift your adventurers with special abilities like fire resistance and invisibility. I will say that this section of the game does get a little repetitive. I find that most characters want either a swift or a tough drink, so you'll be making a lot of those and it's the same recipe every time. Over the course of the game, you do unlock more recipes to accompany the infusions, but at the start, I wasn't sure about using them in case it was the wrong drink or I wasted all of my limited infusions. But I started experimenting a little more at hour four or five and it did make the game a little more enjoyable. Although it does remain slightly repetitive, there are only so many recipes after all. I will also say that it is very difficult to actually get a drink wrong. Your familiar Andu is a really fun addition to the drink making mechanics and I like that you feed your drinks to them if you get them wrong. Although I will say it's not 100% clear how much you're tipping away and you sometimes have to redo things that were correct which you accidentally deleted. While you will make drinks during general conversation, you'll also need to make them when your adventurers are going on quests. Every time they accept a quest, they'll usually present you with two options as to how they would execute it, whether that's being sneaky or trying to be charismatic or something else. As the proprietor of the local tavern and the expert in mixology, they leave it up to you to decide which road they should go down. Despite choosing an option for every quest, I don't believe they change the story too much outside of when they recount what happened on that quest. But I can't tell you that for certain without replaying the story and making different choices. The final thing I wanted to touch upon in this game is the art, which is beautiful. The attention to detail both to the tavern and the characters themselves is really impressive. The devs have really brought this fantasy world to life through the decorations in the tavern, the designs of the different drinks, and the way the world changes outside of your window. Every character has a really unique look that conveys a lot about their personality, and even the way they sit at the bar, or literally sitting on it like Melly, is different. There is no voice acting in this game, but the different character expressions make up for that a little bit, as they convey the different emotions the adventurers go through really well. Overall, this is an incredibly well-polished game. At the moment, in games, you can't always count on there being no bugs at launch. However, I encountered barely any outside of one bug where it used every pronoun instead of my pronoun on one occasion. I would definitely recommend this one, especially the fans of Coffee Talk and D&D. &D. This was a much longer game than I was expecting, and knowing you can go back and do the other choices as well just adds even more to the content. Also, for anyone who plays on Steam Deck like me, you can actually change the size of the text, making it easier to read, which is a big plus when it's so text heavy. So what did you think of Tavern Talk? Are you going to be picking it up or have you already? Let me know in the comments and as always, I look forward to seeing you next video. Bye!